all right so here's the uh full bridge setup so again this is just the second little buck circuit i've made to uh test out this was the first setup i actually did testing on with the very first build that i ended up uh doing down there the difference is uh that other buck had about 8,000 microfarad at least to start i think i ended up with 12 and this has only got five different switch different lc filter uh, but otherwise i've tried to make this about as identical to how i had it before as i possibly could and it took a lot of tweaking i don't think i actually have the exact tuning on it that i did uh, but what i ended up with was uh something to where i could get i would say decent arcs at around the same voltages so the way this is tuned just got that little arc coming out there Let's see if i can get the lighting a little better so that's about 50 volt ramps so again the difference is uh you know i was testing that other half bridge deal back there and you know I, I, was, I was putting about 200 volt ramps on it that one ran a little bit more efficient i would say but i needed about that whole 200 volts just to get you know a little, little bit longer ramps than that right so this time I'm not using the ZVS driver. I've just got the Variac going. And again, that's being powered through a little inverter that's coming off this single supply here. So I've basically got 18 volts now powering that Tesla coil driver and the buck driver. And then coming out with the same battery through the inverter and this Variac. So this Variac's probably got something like maybe 130 volts on it. Uh, DC that I'm rectifying into those caps with about a 50 volt or so ramp. So with that, cut the uh, on time up a little bit. Leave it back down. Actually, let me adjust this light. So I can't 100% remember what I was getting before uh, from roughly the same voltage. But I will say before, once I got to about 75 volt ramps, like let's say something about like that, then they were pretty, pretty decent, I would say. So that's not quite what I was getting, I think, but uh, that's pretty close. Cut the... Uh, and that's with the on time all the way down again so if I crank that up a little bit I get the little straighter swords cut it up a lot but the ramp is not quite as clean on this one um I'll say this one's probably taking quite a bit more power. That uh, filter has to do a little bit more work. So if, uh, so I've got the Variac actually probably at about 100 volts right now. And I'm going to bring the ramp up. So, so that's about 90 volts. I'm going to bring it to maybe 100 top, something like that. I'm not really going to go over that. I need to get the tuning right so that's the on time bump back down and now when I increase it again it sort of tames the uh, arcs to make better swords you kind of see the slight slope that I've got there a little bit more ripple and that slope over is kind of telling me that um, I basically need more capacitance if I could take it that bridge finally getting slightly warm so if I could actually put about 8,000 microfarad on there which would really just mean adding another one of those big caps uh, then I could probably pretty closely equal to about what I had before Which I'll say is probably going to be difficult. 
uh, because that other one obviously is using a, a, a beefier full bridge, you know. Um, but I'm telling you, those 60 and 65s are really impressive switches. So the cool thing about this is with this particular tuning, with this particular setup, um, only requires about 100 volts or so to get those decent arcs and it actually makes the job of uh, the ZVS a whole lot easier. As far as the gate drive portion of the buck itself, not really doing anything fancy here. Um, on the first setup I had, just started with a low side gate driver. Uh, and those were the 9 amp peak drivers. And I just figured, okay, I'm just going to use one of these pretty good reliable drivers that I've always used before because I ended up driving a brick with it um, and then ultimately what I ended up with I just used one of these to actually switch the uh, gate driver on this one I'm just using one of these so this is a gate driving opto it's how it's uh, internally built you can see these are commonly used for three phase applications like this um, you know, which by the way, this is another thing I kind of wanted to do a video on so this right here is what is basically a three phase inverter circuit is going to look like right so a lot of times you're actually going to have a three phase brick module that is more or less built like this on the inside so basically what that means is if you've got a three phase module where one of the switches has failed or maybe two of them if you're lucky it'll just be one you've still got a full bridge a working full bridge in this module right so i mean that's literally what this is right here that's a full bridge and uh with a three phase you've just got two more switches uh, to account for another phase that can be pretty handy if you can get your hands on what's more or less discarded useless three phase module you might have to bust one open and do a little snip snip you know but can be very useful so basically what this is is um it's got an led here it's going to provide your isolation this does your switching right here uh, with this collector here so i'm just feeding my ramp generator output from the arduino from the pins two and three, three is ground. I'm just going through that five volt output with the uh, 270 ohm. I don't know why this is W, but 270 ohm resistor. Now you got a bypass cap here. Got about five ohms gate resistance uh, leading to the gate, and that's about it. Really nothing special there. And here's just another fancy piece of artwork showing how that's basically wired up. I mean, I basically showed this before. This is just including the gate drive so that's all it is what this effectively does just this opto here it just isolates the ramp generator uh from everything else right so this is going to be the little arduino deal little metallic box i've got it's got an enable output and the ramp output so the ramp output is obviously the um, square waves that are going to be driving the switch on the buck so that's what's feeding this gate driver the enable pulse is basically what's going to the enable input on the Tesla coil. So wherever the normal Tesla coil interrupter would go, that's where this input would go. But, you know, you're using this as the interrupter now. So while it's given the ramps uh, with this particular ramp generator that uh, Finn Hammer made, you know, the on time is being controlled by the enable input right there. Unless I'm remembering that wrong, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So as long as you got a regular Tesla coil that's got enable inputs, you know, either through the gate drivers or, you know, how, however else you do it, that's where that goes. The basic way of how it is wired up with mine, you know, I'm not including every little thing like bypass caps, uh, smoothing, you know, zeners, anything like that. I mean, that's up to you, but that's basically how that's going to work as far as the ramp generator, gate drive connected to the buck, and then the output of the buck, of course, you're going to have positive and negative. It's just chopping up your positive, uh, your voltage here. And you just feed that onto your bus of the Tesla coil. And obviously, again, you don't want to have big smoothing caps over there. Otherwise, all you're doing is just flatten out your ramps that you're feeding. So very little smoothing on there. And then uh, bing, bang, boom.